He prays that you would be increased a thousand times more than you already are as he has promised. So there was this promise of, the, of a thousandfold increase. Now, of course, I, I, I didn't have the faith for it. I had the faith for 30, 60, 100, you know, but I didn't have a faith for a thousand. And I wasn't sure if it was financial. So I asked the Lord, I said, well, is that even financial? And he goes, well, look it up. So I started looking up the words inside that scripture, and I looked up the number 1,000, and the number 1,000 not only means the letter, but it means this, flocks, herds, goats, sheep. That was wealth in those days. So I was saying a 1,000 times more than you already are, as he has promised. It's a promise that not very many people have tapped into. All the promises of God are, are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. So this is a promise. So the Lord said, I'm going to give you Deuteronomy 111 promise. And then he, boom. Next day I get a call from my, my, my uh, manager. She said, you're not going to believe this. This lady came. She, she came from Canada. I let her stay at the ministry house. She said they're looking for a house for themselves. They went out all week looking for a house. And they, they, they couldn't find one, couldn't find one, couldn't find one. They looked at so many houses. She, the lady finally said, oh. Well, you sent me here from Canada to look for a house, and I, every one of them, you said no, no to. Uh, what's up? And he said, well, because I didn't send you here to buy a house for yourself. Wow. I sent you here to bless the ministry. So they wrote us a $100,000 check so we could have a place. Now, if that's not a Deuteronomy 111, I don't know what. <clears throat> From that day on, God began to show me 111s, 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 111s everywhere I'd go. I mean, I would go and, and cook something in the microwave. I'd reach up to stop it. It'd be at 1 minute, 11 seconds in. I'd be driving down the road and, you know, listening to worship music. And, you know, I'd be singing along. And all of a sudden, the Lord would have me sovereignly look down at the at the CD player right when it was like track one, 11 seconds in. I mean, I, I would I would look at my phone when, when I was talking to somebody. And I would be looking at it right when the conversation was 1 minute, 11 seconds into the conversation. People would text me at 111 I walk by the TV I live in Phoenix and it would say <clears throat> the weather today is 111 degrees <laughs> and believe it or not I would be saying thank God it's not 117 <laughs> I mean you know 111 was everywhere everywhere one time I went to Patricia King's meeting one night and and I was sitting in the back and I was working I had a blackberry at that time <sighs> get behind me Satan and I'm working on it and it froze up on me my emails, and I'm trying to get my, you know, out of the application, power down my phone, it won't do it. And she starts preaching on the Deuteronomy 111 blessing. I was like, oh, it's not just me. If the mama is talking about it, it must be real, right? So I'm sitting there try listening to her preach. I'm getting my faith up. And all of a sudden I realized as I looked down that my phone had gotten stuck um, on my email app when the 111th email came in. Yeah, it was my 111th email. And I remember saying, what are you trying to say to me, God? He goes, I'm trying to tell you that I just showed you how serious I am about this 111 blessing. So serious that I sent you an email about it and it got stuck on it because I'm stuck on this message. And God began to have me go and preach it to churches everywhere. I mean, the first church I, I preached it to, I got off the, I got off the plane. Um, God had, had released me to release it corporately to churches. The pastor is a very good friend of mine. I could get him on the phone right now. He'll verify all these stories. He comes running up to me, and I go, Pastor. First words out of my mouth. I said, Pastor, I've been released to give the thousandfold blessing out. And he goes, I already know. I already got it. And I was like, what? I didn't even call you and tell you. He goes, you didn't have to. Your angel came to me yesterday and gave it to me. And I'm like, really? He goes, yeah, and I got proof. Because after he came... I said, I went to, to go try to sell a house that I've been trying to sell for five years with not a single offer. And he goes, and I was uh, got a phone call from my wife. Go, somebody wants to meet you at the house. And I was so disgusted with that house that I said, no, I ain't going. I'm tired of that house. I'm not going. I'm not going to waste my time. And she's like, did you forget what you got this morning? And he's like, oh, yeah. And it was like, go go over there and meet them and, 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 and talk to them about this house. So he calls up the guy. The guy says, yeah, I want to see the house. And he goes, okay, fine. I'll meet you over there. And, and he hangs up the phone. He goes, Lord, I will go over there, but you got to have that guy sell. It's got to buy. He's got to buy it. I got to sell it in five minutes. Five minutes, Lord. That's it. Otherwise, I quit. So he Drives over there. The guy shows up. He goes, oh, wow, beautiful house. It's on the golf course. Wow, marble, marble countertops. Wow, fireplace. Wow, I love the floors. Well, I'll take it. Five minutes. Sold the house. He hadn't been sold in five years. $350,000 blessing. 
so I go to his church that night, and I'm like, uh, okay, I'm going to preach this message, right? So I'm all amped up now, because now we got my testimony, we got his te testimony. I'm super excited, right? And I'm preaching about Deuteronomy 111, and I'm going for it, right? And there's this guy, and he's sitting like right on this side of the, of the row, kind of right be where, behind where you're sitting, sir. And he's leaning out towards me, and he's looking at me like this. <laughs> like, Really? Guess who he was? The treasurer for the church. Oh, great man of faith for finances. So he's looking at me like, no way, disgusted looking, right? And I'm preaching away. And finally, I, it comes time to take the offering. And he, he, he gets up out of his seat, and he, he whips a 10 spot out of his back pocket, and he kind of saunters up like this. And he looks at me like this, and he throws the money in the bucket like this, like, there you go, little girl. And walks away. Next day, a guy comes up to me he never met and said, I don't know why, but I'm supposed to write you a $10,000 check. Wow, Next day. Wow. Next day. Now, I can call pastor right now. And all these testimonies, I'm telling you, he would prove that I'm not making up anything, that I'm telling you exactly what happened. Then there was this couple in the same church. This man had worked for a warehouse company for 20 years. 20 years, he shows up faithfully every day. He is like the dream employee, never messes up, never is late, never gets sick. After 20 years, he finally gets hurt. He gets hurt, and he has to go for rehab. Okay, so he goes for rehab. He's in that in the meeting that night. Okay, he goes for rehab. This is like five years earlier, and he tries to get better. They rehabilitated him for the injury. Then he goes back to work, and he finds out he's still injured. He can't continue, so he has to go out again and go for more rehab. And when that happens the second time, the company that he's worked for faithfully for 20 years fires him. So now he's like, oh, I can't believe it. I gave you guys my all, and you did that? I got hurt one time? And, and so him and his wife prayed. They felt released by the Lord to sue them, to take them to court. So they did, and they lost. So then they appealed it, and they went back to court again, and they lost. So then they appealed that, and they went back to court again, and they lost five times. Five times they went to court to try to get what was justly due him, and they lost. Now, this was five years before I saw them that night. And then what happens? I'm preaching the Deuteronomy 111 message. They get their faith up. They come and they throw some money in the bucket. Five days later, they get a letter. A letter from the court on a closed case. And inside is a $40,000 check. Look, you may be needing to sell a house that hasn't sold for a long time. Or uh, you've had a court case where you got robbed or ripped off. And you think, oh, oh, it's already closed. There's no way I can get my money. There's no way I can sell this house. I can't get the money that I put in and out of it. No. God is causing you to have a thousandfold increase as he has promised you. Amen. This is real stuff. This is real stuff. Now, just to let you know, I don't preach this message. I don't preach this message unless I've seen a lot of 111s coming into a meeting. So I don't know, Heidi, how many times did you see 111 in the last week and a half? Five, six times. Okay, just in the last four days... Um, we, we were driving. We were driving to Marco Island to do television. As we're driving to Marco Island to do three days of television, which we just ended yesterday, to uh, on Faith Television Network, which I'm part owner of, and which goes to all the nations. Right? I, I happened to look down at our at our GPS right when there was 111 miles left. I have the screenshot on my phone. Okay. Then we we went all the way back roads. Back roads, we come out onto the main freeway right at exit 111. I got a screenshot on my phone. We were doing the broadcast the other day to the nations. The broadcast just started. Here comes the viewers. They're starting to come onto social media. I happen to look. I'm sitting on the set now. Like, we are live. I'm sitting on the set now with my iPad and my phone. I look down as the countdown is coming out, and it comes right up to, I look down, and it's right at 111 viewers. And it stays there long enough for me to take out my phone, find my, find my phone app, and click a photo of it. Okay, 111 everywhere. I'm in the plane coming here. I don't think you're getting it yet. <laughs> I'm in the plane coming here, taking a snooze in the plane, because I've been out for three weeks, okay, working for the man. <laughs> and that one, too. Okay. All right. 
And I take a snooze. I open my eyes right when there's what? 111 miles left on the trip. It's on my trip tracker, flight tracker, on my screen in Delta Airlines. I got a picture of it. Okay, like, go back. You can see. And there's way more than that. I would not. Oh, God. I don't, know if, I don't think you're understanding yet. Okay. I would not be preaching this message unless I seen that. Now, let me tell you some of the more miracles that happened. There was another meeting with a woman there. Her husband had left her. In the middle of the night, didn't tell her he was leaving, packed his bags, okay, snuck out, and gutted the bank account when he left. Yeah, right. Mm. I don't know if y'all know me, but I did time in prison, so mm. I used to collect for people. Mm. That's what I had, right. That was my favorite job, doing collections. I love going to get money from people who are, are sassy and don't think they owe people money or have taken money from people. So when I heard that story, I was like, ooh, right? So she, she's there with nothing. She has no skills. She has no money. She doesn't know what she's going to do. He took all the money, okay? And so she comes to the meeting. I'm preaching the Deuteronomy 111 blessing. She's got literally change in her pocket. She comes up and throws the change into the, into the bucket and says, I need that, God. I need it super bad. Five days later, I don't know why, but some of these things happen right away, or they happen like five days later. Five days later, guess what? She gets a letter from the ex. He's apologizing. That's right. He's apologizing, says all his fault, has nothing to do with her. And he apologizes for taking all the cash. And inside, check, check. So the pastor calls me up and says, do you want to believe it? She got a letter of apology and a check. And I said, and a check. And he goes, and a check. And I go, good thing, because if there was no check in the letter, I'd go get it for her. <laughs> so it's a good thing when God does a collection on you and not me. Amen. But see how God, people could have ripped you off and burnt you. A lot of people in here have been ripped off and burnt. But God wants to give you back a thousand times more. Not just seven. Not just seven. But a thousand times more. A thousand times more. Then there was this lady who came to the meeting when I was preaching Deuteronomy 111. She comes to the meeting. And she, her husband also left her. She's been divorced. She has no skills. She thinks, what am I going to do now? I got to get a, I got to create a business. I got to get a job. I got to do something. Well, she always wanted to be a silk screener. Silk screener. She thought, that's what I'll do. I'll start a, start a t-shirt silk screening company. So she goes out and she buys a rickety old used silk screening machine. It still works, but it's old and it's used, and, but it's hers. So she buys it, but she has no clients, no customers, you know, barely even knows how to do it, just learning. Comes to the meeting. She sews into the message when I speak about the Deuteronomy 111. Okay, then what happens? Just a few days later, she gets a phone call. She gets a phone call from a guy in the government who runs in that city. The, the government, the city, runs the power grid. Okay? So he calls her and says, mm, I want to hire you and give you the governmental contract <laughs> for all the T-shirts for the power company. And she goes, wow. Okay, <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, like, who would give a governmental contract to a person that works out of their house with a rickety old used silk screening machine that doesn't even really know what they're doing yet? So she goes, oh, this is amazing. Uh, she goes, uh, okay, yes, absolutely. She goes, but can I ask you a question? And he goes, sure. And, and she goes, how did you get my number? Because I don't have any cards yet. And he goes, I don't know. Of course we know. Of course we know. Of course, we know. You know what? God can give you wisdom to do something that you've been dreaming of that's in your heart. Something you've been going, I really would like to do that. But I don't really know how. But God can give you the know-how supernaturally. And he can connect you with major open doors that you could never get without his help and that's how he can cause you to increase a thousand times more than you already are 
Do you believe it? If you believe it, reach up and pull it in. Pull it in. Pull in that wisdom. Pull in that favor. Pull in that revelation. Pull in that activation. Pull it in. Pull it in. Because God wants to give it to you. Amen. He wants to give it to you. I hear there's many people in here that will make a difference in this planet because God's about to launch you into something that you never thought you could have because he wants to increase you a thousand times more than you already are, than you already are, than you already are. And real estate, I got to say this one again because we just talked about a real estate one, but I got to say this one again because this one's so good because so many people right now are believing for land deals, for buildings, for real estate, okay, and it can happen to you. This lady walked up to me, I was doing a meeting, and she walked up to me, and she said, like, she goes, four years ago, I was in a meeting of yours, and you were doing the Deuteronomy 111 preach. I said, yeah, I don't do that everywhere, I only do it where I see a bunch of 111s, and I know God's releasing me to do it. She goes, yeah, yeah, you said that. She goes, and when I was there, I sewed into it, and I said, well, what happened? She goes, my mother died 11 years ago, and I was like, at that point, and it had been 11 years, and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. She goes, yeah, thank you, but, you know, here's what happened. After my mom died, my inheritance was her house. That was my inheritance. She goes, so I put her house in the market and did not get one single offer for 11 years. 11 years with not a single offer. And I was like, oh, my God. She goes, yeah. She goes, but that night, oh, God. I sold into the Deuteronomy 111. I received it in my heart. She goes, and the next day, she goes, I didn't get just one. I got two offers. I took the highest one, and I have my inheritance now. <laughs> you know, a lot of you got robbed from an inheritance. Or there's an inheritance out there that you don't even know about. You don't even know about it. But God is going to pay you back where you were ripped off Maybe your siblings or someone in your family or some stranger took your inheritance. Or maybe you didn't even know you had one. But Jesus can bring, he brings everything into the light. He brings everything into the light. And God is going to reveal inheritances to people. Inheritances of money, inheritances of land, inheritances of building, inheritances of wealth, inheritances of favor. Because God is prospering people a thousand times more than they already are. I'm telling you, just a few 111s I told you, I could go to my phone right now and scroll through and go, oh, yeah, there's that one, too. Oh, yeah, there's that other one. Oh, yeah, there's that one. I saw 111s, 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 111s for the first time in months and months and months. I have not preached this message for over a year and a half. Okay, did you hear me? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I appreciate Kissimmee which was two weeks ago, but that was the first time in a year and a half, so this is the second time I preached it in a year and a half. I ain't joking. I ain't playing. Because this is real. Do you know that, that, that it, it died down for a while the first time, and then when it picked up again, like a couple years later, I preached it, preached it, preached it, and boom, I got a $100,000 blessing again, my second one. Boom. Okay, then it died down again. Boom. It, it goes in waves. We're on the wave right now. We're up on the crest. We're up on the crest, riding the wave. Riding the wave. Riding the wave. Riding the wave. I remember I was at Patricia King Conference. This was a big one. It was in Fountain Hills in, 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 in Arizona. There was 1,500 people there. I started preaching this message. I didn't even get 15 minutes into it, and people were mobbing the stage. Mobbing. 1,500 people mobbing the stage. I was going out praying for people. People were flying around the room. I was flying around the room. It was crazy. And miracles were happening during the preach. During the preach in the 15 minutes, there was an actor there. He'd been trying to get a job in Hollywood. You know how hard it is to get a job as an actor in Hollywood? It's very hard. Okay, that guy had been trying for months, even years, to get a job in Hollywood as an actor. Well, he got texts from his agent for two jobs during the 15-minute preach. Okay, there's a guy, what's his name? Something Springer, Heidi. Who? what's his name? Steven Springer, he's a big evangelist in Wisconsin, working on a land deal, had been working on it for years. He's sitting there during the preach. He flips open his laptop, looks down in his email. The land deal he'd been waiting for came in, came in. The offer came in during the preach. 
This one lady, she came up crying. She said, I've had this skin company for like a year. A year. And I've never made a single sale in a year. She goes, I got four of them. Four of them during the preach. <laughs> yeah, keep your eye on the texting. I mean, it's like, wow, crazy, okay? Like, it was amazing. A Brazilian lady, she was so funny. She came up to testify, and she goes, I had a divorce from my husband. And since the divorce, he took in all the money. I didn't have no money. I didn't have no credit. So to get back at him for revenge, I would make a credit card and run up the bill so it would go on his credit. <laughs> Did you get what I said? <laughs> I was like, uh -huh. uh, yeah, that's funny. Is that funny? It is funny. Yeah, okay, it's funny. Right? And she goes, but all this time, and now he has a Google friend and all this house and everything, and I don't have no house. I don't have no house, and I've been trying to give me a house. And every time I apply for me house, I don't have the credit, so I can't give me my house. She goes, and I've been begging everybody, please, I just want to rent me my house. And she goes, and I never can give me my house. She goes, but during what you're preaching, you're preaching, and I get a text, and I got me the me house. I got my house. Another lady came up, and she told me a story. She said, oh, about six months ago, you, you preached this message online. She goes, my friend, I, she goes, I'm from Canada, and I've been living in the United States. She goes, and I just had ran out of money. She goes, I ran out of money, but I had this piece of land in Canada, and it wasn't selling, wasn't selling, wasn't selling. She goes, so I, my friend knew that I was in desperate need, so she calls and uh, says, uh, uh, you need to watch Katie, so she's going to she's gonna preach on uh, the Deuteronomy 111 blessing. She goes, so I watched you online. I saw what happened. I sold 200 bucks. She goes, four days later, my attorney calls me and says, you know, I know you're broke. I have the money to buy your property. I'm going to front you the money and take control of the property. And when it sells, I'll take the money. Now, listen, listen, I used to be a drug dealer. You don't front. You don't front. Okay? He front her $674,000. Hello? Somebody's going to front you money. Are you ready? I want you to get out. I want you to speak to the Holy Spirit right now. I want you to ask Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I want it. Say, I want it. I want it. I need it. It's the truth. It's a promise. It's in the word. I need you to give it to me. I claim it now. Tell me what seed to plant, Holy Spirit. Okay, now, get quiet and let him tell you what seed. Okay, go. Let me have the, the keyboard up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I just want you to be obedient to do what you just heard. If it's five bucks, it's five bucks. If it's 500, be brave. Obey. Okay, you can, there's letter, there's envelopes on the seats. You can go, if you're watching online, you can go to Idols Riot Healing School and Miracle Services, and you punch that, and you give right there. And you can also text to give, 520-221-2181. Okay, text give to that number. Text give to that number. You can see ways to give right there on the board. You can do Cash App. You can do online. You can do all these different ways. Can I have a bucket up here? Because I want to pray over every offering that comes up. I want to I want to release a thousand full blessing. Now, how many of you have already been seeing 111s? Okay. I release you seeing 111s now to build your faith, to collect. The mantle that I'm going to release right now. All right, now get your offering ready. I'm going to pray over every offering. Thank you, Lord. Thousandfold. I decree it right now. I release the mantle and the seeds. I release the mantle and every seed right now. In the name of Jesus, right now. Thank you, God. A thousandfold on that seed. A thousandfold right now. A thousandfold. A thousandfold in Jesus' name right now. In the name of Jesus, right now, right now, I decree it as He has promised, as He has promised, as He has promised. 
as he has promised, a thousand times more than you already are for homes, for revelation, for jobs, for open doors, for opportunities, for justice, for justice, for healing, for breakthrough. Right now, in Jesus' name, right now, I release the thousandfold. I touch and agree with you. I touch and agree with you. Say, touch and agree. We touch and agree. We touch and agree right now. I touch and agree right now for every seed right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, right now. In Jesus' name, right now. Right now. In the name, in the name, right now. In the name, right now. In the name, right now. Thank you, Lord. Thousandfold, I touch and agree with everyone right now that you will receive the mantle. Right now, the mantle to have manifestation. I command manifestation of a thousandfold right now. In Jesus' name. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now. And precious. In the name of Jesus. Precious. In Jesus' name. Right now. Every seed. Every seed. Say, as you're coming up, say, I want my thousandfold. I receive it, Lord. Come on. Say, show me my 111s. Show me my 111s. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I, I bless these seeds right now. I bless them in Jesus' name. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, right now, right now, right now. I hear many, many people that have had projects that kept on crashing. They're not going to crash anymore. They're not going to crash anymore. They're not going to crash anymore. You're going to see fulfillment of your promises. Fulfillment of your deals. For, for, fill, fulfillment of those business arrangements. Fulfillment, fulfillment of the manifestations right now in Jesus name right now right now in the name of Jesus now when you see 111 this is what I want you to do I want you to say I see it it's mine now manifest what are you going to say when you see 111 I see it it's mine now manifest do it again I see it it's mine now manifest do it one more time I see it it's mine now manifest now give God a big shout Thank you, Lord. Right here is another woman. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> oh, right here, Pastor. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So, look, we're going to talk about idols tonight. What are idols? <laughs> is, that, is that an Old Testament subject? No, no, it's a New Testament subject. It's a now subject. Look, they had a lot of idols back in the day. But, uh, we have them today, too. You can make an idol out of anything. Your kids, yourself, shopping, money, cars, family, husband, wife, business, ministry, all of it. You can make an idol out of anything. Thank you. Okay, let's give a big hand. I'll need you back. But I'll need you back. Okay. How do you know if you made something into an idol? You spend excessive amount of time, think, time thinking about it. You catch your mind going to that thing a lot. Dwelling on it, thinking about it. Thinking about if it's a thing, thinking about how it weighs, how to get it. Well, I could skim a little money off of here and hide a little money from my husband off of there. and Stuff it in my sock in the back of my closet. Put it on layaway and then I'll pay this piece and that part and you know what I mean you manipulate your life and people and situations so you can get it Ooh, we, ooh I repent for that Lord that's how you can tell if you made something into an idol how much time are you thinking about it are you thinking about it more than you think about God or even equal to he doesn't deserve equal time he deserves more time the most time okay Idols, since we can make anything into an idol, are dangerous. I'll tell you why. Because the Bible says that when Israel worshipped idols, they were really worshipping demon spirits. Because idols aren't just statues. There's a statue out in front of this building. When I pass by it, I got a headache. Because don't even think there's not a demon spirit behind it. Okay, it's the god of metal, Right? Okay, you guys might not know who I am and what I do, but one of the biggest miracles that always happen in my meeting, you can ask anybody in here that's been to my meetings, is metal disappears from people's bodies. So I, I'm going to challenge homie out front. <laughs> Woo! Woo! 
Now you think, what could he be doing to people? Anybody that has a metal implant or an implant in their body in the city is probably under pain. You know, he's also, I, I heard the, the legend that, you know, pastor told me about that guy, Vulcan, or what is his name? And that's not Spock. Okay. That he's not only over metal, but he himself got disabled and hurt. And this city has more disabled people than any other city in America. So that spirit behind that seemingly, in, you know, innocent, gigantic, ugly as butt <laughs> statue. I don't know why anybody want to worship that. It's, like, it's not like he's Adonis or anything. Okay. Is making people disabled. He's making people disabled. Now, is that in the Bible? Yes. Revelation 9.20 says that the people worship their demon gods, idols that could not see, could not hear, and could not walk. What does that mean? That these demons behind these idols can make you deaf, dumb, blind, and crippled, disabled. These spirits cause you to have issues in your body. Issues in your finances, issues in your family life, they attack you. If you make anything into an idol, it's giving a demon spirit the legal right to make you deaf, dumb, blind, and crippled. Why do you think all, Why do you think there's so many disabled people out there? They got idols in their own life, so it gives that demon God the right to make them disabled. The devil needs a legal landing strip. When we have idolatry in our life, we're giving it to him. Do you understand? What's a biblical example of some of these deaf, deaf, blind, and crippled? Well, think about it, okay? In Lystra, there was a man crippled from the womb. Remember that story? In Acts 14, man was born crippled from the womb. Paul is there. He sees that that guy has faith to be healed. He tells him, stand up on your feet and walk, and he leaps up. And it says in the crowd there, seeing what Paul had done, lifted up their voices, shouting in the Laconian language, the gods have come down to us in human form. They call Barnabas Zeus. They call Paul Hermes. And then the priest of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance of the town, brought bulls and garlands to the city gate and wanted to join the people in offering sacrifices to Paul. These people, this whole city of Lystra was full of what? Idol worshipers. No wonder that guy was born crippled from the womb in his feet because idols cannot see, they cannot hear, and they cannot walk. This God that's over this city, which I heard there's like a 300-foot statue of him someplace else. He's over metal. Smack that, right? And he's causing more disability... Because idols are cripple. They make you cripple. When I teach this, we're going to tomorrow night. How many people in here have spinal problems? Knee, back, hips, neck. Raise your hands really high. You're going to be healed. Because we're going to get free of idols. You know how many people have seen their spines move into place without anybody touching them? When they got healed and delivered of the idols in their life. Because idols are crippled. They cannot walk. Did you hear what I said? You guys got to come to the school. Because in the school we walk you step by step through how to work these miracles. Idols cannot see and they cannot hear. Where's an example of that in the Bible? Seeing. Idols seeing. Remember uh, blind Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus? Jesus passes by, he's blind, he cries out, son of David, have mercy on me, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stops, he runs up to him, he heals him. He's born, he, he was not born blind, but he was a blind man. Now I noticed, I remember thinking, what made him blind, Lord, what made him blind? I noticed that the scripture said that he was blind Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. I'm like, 
Why does it mention that? That's not the norm in, in, in the New Testament. It doesn't go around telling uh, us the names of people and the names of those people's fathers of the people that Jesus healed. So why in this story does the story bring up that blind Bartimaeus' father was named Timaeus? You know why? Because of what the name Timaeus means. To defile oneself with idols. Timaeus was an idol worshiper. Grew up, everybody in the household looking at those idols. And, but idols cannot see. And that idol worship in his family made Bartimaeus blind. That's one of the reasons I believe he said, have mercy on me, O Lord. Because in his gut, he knew something was wrong. He knew something was going on in his family. And it was that idol worship. That idol worship. It made him blind. What about death? Is there anybody in the Bible that was deaf because of an idol? Yes. Yes. Remember the little boy down at the foot of, Mount, of the Mount of Transfiguration? Jesus comes down. The disciples are there. They're all trying to deliver this kid. He was deaf, dumb, and epileptic. Remember that? Deaf, dumb, and epileptic. Nobody could deliver this kid. And everybody's wondering, oh, well, how come we can't do it? Jesus comes along, snap of the fingers. He delivers that kid from this deaf, dumb spirit that also made that kid epileptic. Okay, what made that kid have that deaf, dumb spirit and that epilepsy spirit? Well, in one translation, I believe it's Mark 9, it says that that child was moonstruck. Moonstruck. That's what they used to call epilepsy in those days. Moonstruck. Moonstruck. The moon goddess. Hello? One of the most prevalent gods and goddesses worshipped in the ancient times was the moon goddess. They worshipped the sun, they worshipped the moon, they worshipped the planets. I mean, even the Israelites had set up sun, moon, and, and planet worship inside the temple of God that had to be cleaned out by, by Josiah, the young king, the young reformer king. Moon worship. That was a demon god in his bloodline that made him deaf. Oh, hello. When you get rid of these idols in your life, this is the biggest plague on the church. Look, and I can go on and on about, and I have scripture for all of it. Just like I gave you the example, blind Bartimaeus, the kid at the bottom of the Mount of Transfiguration. I can give you scripture for all of this. That idols will cause you skin problems, inflammation, cancer and gross, hemorrhoids. Ouch! You thought these idols were a pain in the butt? You're right. You are right. Okay. That these idols are causing everything. They're controlling your food. One of the biggest idols, every idol worshiping ceremony in the Old Testament times had what? They brought food to dedicate to their idols. So you wonder why you can't stop eating or you're addicted to sugar or you can't stop eating fast food or you eat even when you're not hungry. You know, it's like me. I... I know I'm skinny and I look like I don't have a problem with idols, but let me tell you, girlfriend could eat. I could out eat any man in this place. I'm telling you that right now, no problem. I mean, for my 10th birthday, my mom made me a porterhouse steak. This big took up a platter. The biggest baked potato there was. I ate the whole thing, record speed. Boom, she brings up my dessert. A half gallon of ice cream still in the carton. She just opened the flaps, stuck a spoon in it because she knew me. Six of those huge glazed donuts around the edge of it. I ate every bite of it. Record speed. Boom, that's me. Ten years old. Okay? Talk about food idols. I had them. Completely controlled by food idols. When you get delivered to them, you're going to have control over your food. And you're going to lose weight supernaturally. I lost ten pounds one night overnight. I woke up in the morning, ten pounds lighter. Boom. It is possible. This is not far-fetched. If God can take metal out of people's bodies, he can make you lose your fat. Just saying. It's connected to these idols. You know they even steal your gifts? Remember what Revelation 9.20 said? Idols are, they, they cannot see, they cannot hear, they cannot speak, they cannot walk. Okay? 
So they make you have a hear, ear problems, ringing, buzzing, deaf ear, you know, a lot, hearing loss, eye problems, floaters, cataracts, glycoma, dry eyes, blindness, make you have speech impediments, and they cause you crippling diseases in your body, arthritis, problems with your spine, neck, back, joints, all that other stuff. But they also attack your gifts. They make it so you can't hear the voice of God. You cannot see in the spirit, see dreams, see visions. You cannot speak the prophetic word accurately. Okay? You cannot walk your walk with God. Is there proof of that in the scriptures? Yeah, Corinthians. Remember Corinthians where Paul talks about 1 Corinthians 12. Paul talks about the gifts. This is what he says. This is in the Amplified Classic. Watch, he says this. Now about the spiritual gifts the special endowments of supernatural energy. Brethren, I do not want you to be misinformed. You know that when you once were a heathen, you were led off after idols that could not speak. Why is he saying, look, I don't want you to be misinformed about the gifts. Here's the deal. You were once led off after idols that could not speak. Wow. What is he saying? He's warning you. He's warning you, saying idols in your life are going to get in the way of your gifts. It's going to make it so you cannot speak the accurate prophetic word, cannot hear the voice of God, cannot see in the spirit, cannot walk out your walk. That's why he gave us that warning. I do not want you to be misinformed, brethren, about the gifts. All right, so how do these idols get their legal right to attack us? In our soul and in the courts. Look at your soul. Number one, we're going to talk about the courts tomorrow, so I'm not even going to go there right now. But the number one legal ground that these devils have is in your soul. It's your soul that lusts after idols. Yeah. Your spirit man don't want an idol. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's your soul that wants these idols. It's your soul that craves that fulfillment of that thing, that rush that happens when you, you know, put something in your cart online. Stick it in my cart. Ooh, that felt good. <laughs> Maybe I should get two. Yeah, one, two. Whew, then it felt even better. Whoa, yeah. It's your soul that does that. Your soul lusts after idols. And a lot of times, listen to me. A lot of times, our soul lusts after idols because our soul has been traumatized. We're under so much trauma that we have pain in our soul, and we're looking for a way to medicate it. We're looking for a way to medicate that pain. We're looking for a way to make it feel good. So that's why we eat. How many of you eat when you're, when you're in pain or angry or upset or lonely or depressed? Okay? How many of you go shopping when you're lonely, depressed, and in pain? That's it? How many of you eat and go shopping when you're depressed? Okay, right? How many of you have, like, like jars full of, of face cream and shampoo under your sink that you never use and shoes with that you've never put on and you went and bought clothes and you got them home and you put them back on and you look at it and you went, that must have been a clown mirror at the store because this looks terrible. <laughs> and then you never take it back. But your soul just had to have it when you were in the store. You thought, oh, that's going to make me look good, feel better. Oh, baby. Hot. Yeah, hot. Right? Your soul just had to have it. Do you see where I'm going? Look, our soul's tricky bag. It's a trick bag. Trick bag. Hello? Trick bag. We got to get our soul healed. And we got to be healed of the trauma, too. Because, man, we've been through some trauma in this last year. We've been through worldwide pandemic trauma. Mask trauma. All kinds of drama. Baby Rama. Daddy Mama. Everything. Right? We've been through stuff. Okay? We've been through trauma, and we're looking for some way to make ourselves feel better. So we've got to get our souls healed. All right? So now we're going to talk about that. And we're going to activate, and then we're going to work miracles. Okay? So we're going to talk about how to heal your soul. Do you know your soul? Your spirit is made instantly perfect when you're born again in Jesus. But your soul isn't. It's progressive. The Bible says that you, will, you are transformed into his image. In his likeness from glory to glory. Glory to glory denotes, denotes progression. It denotes progression. Step by step, we get healed in here. The spirit happens, boom. Step by step, we get healed in here. 
Now, you notice it said that we are transformed into his image, into his likeness from glory to glory. That word transformed there is the same word used for the Mount of Transfiguration. For the Mount of Transfiguration, where Jesus went up the mountain. You remember the story. Mark 9, Matthew 17, he went up the mountain. And what happened? As he's sitting there praying, all of a sudden his face becomes bright as the sun. His clothing became as white as light. Okay? And, and, and... You know, it was like shining light. And then a cloud, it says. In the Amplified Bible, it says a cloud, glory cloud. It says, quote, composed of light overshone him. Right? So what showed up on the mountain was glory and light. Glory and light. And then Jesus comes down in Mark 9. It actually says, I don't know, do you guys have that scripture back there, Mark 9? About him still dazzling with light. It says that as he's going to heal the boy with the deaf ear. That he was still covered with light. Let me find it. Because you're going to be impressed. <laughs> you are. For, seriously. Because I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you that the light of Christ is not some witchcraft, new age teaching. That it's actually a power. It's a power that Jesus himself used to heal people. And he uses it to heal our soul. He uses it to heal our body. Amen. So it says this. I hope I can find it. Verse 15 in Mark 9 of the Amplified Classic, it says, And immediately when they saw Jesus returning from the Holy Mount, his face and person yet glistening, were greatly amazed and ran up and greeted him. Why does the Holy Spirit go out of its way to bring up this fact that Jesus, when he came down from the Mount, where, uh, where his face became brighter than the sun, and, and, and there was a glory cloud uh, c composed of light overshadowing him, why does it go out of its way to say that his face and person were still glistening with that light? When he's about to heal a kid that nobody else can heal. Why? Why? Because I'm going to prove to you right now that the light of Jesus Christ heals you. In your soul, in your body. It's a power. It's not just Jesus looking sparkling. And this is not a new age witchcraft teaching. You know why? Because we had it first. Because God is light and there is no darkness in him. And when God opened his mouth in Genesis 1 and he said, let there be light, and there was light, why did it happen in that order? Because God is light. So when he opened his mouth, what came out of him was who he is. And the light is just not for God to be sparkling or the light of the sky. It's an actual power. Jesus is the light of the world. That's what the scripture said. And you know what he says in, in John 8, 12? He says, I am the light of the world, and he who believes in me will not walk in the dark, but will have the light, which is life. What does that mean? We have darkness inside of us. Darkness of bad, wrong thinking. Darkness of offense and criticism. Darkness of uh, bitterness. Darkness of misunderstanding. Darkness of fear. Darkness of anxiety. Darkness of depression. We have darkness inside of us. But Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever believes in me will not have to be walking in the dark, but will have what? The light, which is life. You've got to start releasing the light, which is life. Jesus lives in you right now. He's the light of the world. And his light brings, brings life, and it overshadows, overpowers, and destroys all the darkness in your soul, including the darkness of idolatry. That's why when he came down off the mount, still glistening with light, that little boy had idolatry in his soul. The father said, uh, can, if you can do something, just do it. And he goes, if I can do something, Jesus said, uh, nothing is impossible with God. He said that to the father about the little boy. You know what the word impossible means? Strong in soul. Strong in soul. What Jesus was saying is, your son has idolatry in his soul. That's what's making this dumb spirit come and bring and make him deaf and dumb. But I just came down off the mountain with still dazzling with light. And my light brings life. My light drives out the darkness that's in people's souls. And brings life to them. So Jesus, it goes to that point of saying that Jesus was still covered with light. Because the Bible is telling us the mechanism that Jesus used to heal that little boy that nobody else could heal. Put your hand on your belly. Say, I've got Jesus in me. 
He is the light of the world. I believe in him. So I don't have to walk in darkness. I release light on everything inside me that's dark. Wrong thinking, fear, doubt, anger, bitterness, judgmental spirits, critical spirits, anything that's dark, including idolatry. I have the light, which is life. It's spreading from my spirit into my soul to wipe out everything that's dark that's in me. I release his light, the light of the world, right now into every part of my soul, mind, will, and emotions. In Jesus' name, now give a shout of praise to God. By the way, if you look up the word voice in the New Testament, Mark 4, he says when Jesus would speak his voice, he would command things to happen, right? Command demons to go, command healings to make. We look at the word voice, you know what it means? To shine forth light, to be bright, to be resplendent, to be brought into the light. What does that mean? Jesus lives in you, the light of the world. Your mouth is the gate that lets him out. When you open your mouth, what happens? Light comes. His, his light. His light. He is the light of the world. It comes up and out your mouth. And it releases into things. It releases into the darkness in your mind, in the darkness in your will, in the darkness in your soul, in the darkness in your body, in the darkness that's in your children, in the darkness that's in your spouse, in the darkness that's in your business, in the darkness that's in your finances. And it brings everything into the light so you can prosper. Why do you think Job 22, 28 says this? You shall decree a thing and it will be established. How many of you have said that scripture before? Well, you're not saying the whole thing. Because the whole thing says, you shall decree a thing, it shall be established, and the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. Why does it say that? Because when you speak a decree, it releases the light of the world, Jesus Christ, up and out of your spirit, out of your mouth, onto that thing you're decreeing over, and the light goes to that thing. You know light travels at 186,000 miles per second? It goes to that thing. It dries out the darkness and the demonic that's on that thing, and then it brings it into the light, and then your decree is established. Your voice releases light. And then your decrees are established. I can't tell you how many big people, if I told you names right now, if I told you names, big people that have called me and asked me to pray for them, they'll be in other countries, Germany, Italy, Ireland, you name it. And I stand in my living room. And I make decrees that the light is going into them to drive out the darkness of wrong thinking, stuff in their soul, sickness in their body. And you know what happens? Boom, texting me. Whew, did you, were you just praying for me right now? Because I just got healed. Boom, were you just praying for me right now? Because I'm at the doctor's and something manifested. The doctor can't explain it, but I've been healed. Because you shall decree a thing, and it shall be established, because the light of Jesus Christ shines upon your ways. Open your mouth right now. Say, the light is coming up and out of my spirit, out of my mouth, towards my soul, towards my mind, towards my will, towards my emotions, to heal me of all idolatry, to heal me of all trauma, to heal me of all pain, to heal me of all affliction, in Jesus' name, as I speak the light towards myself and towards my spouse and towards my children and to my finances and on my business and to my ministry and in my church for prosperity for all darkness to be destroyed, I know that my decrees are being established because the light of Jesus Christ is shining upon my ways. Now give God a praise. Yeah. 
You know that your praise releases light? Psalm 111, (laughs) verse 1, tells us to praise the Lord. That word praise there is the Hebrew word hala. It means this, to shine forth, to bring forth into the light, to strike with lightning. You see, that's why, listen to me, that's why we have to praise the Lord even through the times when we just want to kill people. We want to slap them silly. We want to go upside down on top of our spouse's face. I'm going to go up your neck and down. That's when you need to start praising. Because getting angry and cussing people out and talking about them and all that, you know what that does? That releases the darkness that's in your soul out your mouth. Darkness does not bring manifestation. It does not establish your decrees. Light does. Praise does. That's why you got to watch your mouth. Right when you feel like, ah, you got to go praise you. Do it like this. I praise you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Do it however you need to do it. Just make sure it takes the form of praise. Because that's what's going to release light. Crush that darkness. Think about the most irritating thing you have right now in your life. Or person. And it's probably a person. Think about them really hard right now. Come on. Think, think about all the trouble they give you. All the assassin that they comes from their mouth. All the gossiping that they spoke over you. All of the stuff they stole from you. How they used you, abused you. Now start thanking the Lord. And release light into that place and that person. Come on, let me hear you. Start thanking the Lord. Pray, come on, let me hear you. Open your mouth. Start praising the Lord. Send that praise and that light to that person. Zap them. Zap them with some lightning right now. By praising God. Come on, let me hear it. Come on, keep on going. Let me hear you praise the Lord. Come on, because light's coming out. Light is coming out. Light is coming out. Light is coming out. Light is coming out as you praise. Come on, you can do better than that. Let's hear it. Come on. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Wimpy. 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 That was wimpy. Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. Hefty, hefty, hefty. As we go, you got to do better. Because you're going to need to know this. You're going to need to remember this. Praise is what's going to release light so the darkness that's in that person will be removed. Hey, will my husband be acting like, <coughs> I'm going to kill you? Okay. Remember, I'm an ex-con. He, so is he. Lucky thing, we better both, by the grace of God, are not both in prison for murder. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm telling you what, many times I praise my way through our fights. Okay? I also, you know, Secretly lay hands on him. You know that you know what it says in Job about God? Job 36, it says, God covers his hands with lightning and commands it to strike its mark. That's why you need to lay hands on where you're sick, where your body hurts, if your heart is hurting, or you're being assaulted in your mind. You lay hands on yourself because we're made in God's image. So lightning actually comes out your hands. Comes out your hands. Okay, sometimes I'll be like, I'll be, be over on that side of the bit, pouting like the oh, tired, give me that blanket, stealing the blanket, irritating me. And I reach over like a kind, loving wife, put my hand on him, and little does he realize that I'm zapping him with lightning, man. <laughs> Snap out of it, boy. <laughs> you can do that, you know. You know, I'll tell you a fun story, and I'll repeat this story again just so you know. So we were in Nashville doing the Idols Riot School, which you got to get to the school because the school is going to teach you how to do the, do the stuff, okay? So after the very end, this pastor, she's coming up to get her graduation certificate. She's got goggle glasses on like this, and this is how she made her way up to the stage to get her graduation certificate because she can't see.
Because she's going blind. Even with the goggle glasses. Okay. Her eyes were gray, covered with a uh, fog, like a glaze and gray. So as she's walking down, I go, Pastor, I'm going to come pray for you after. She goes, okay. Go back to her seat. So everybody's going, I go over there. I go, you ready? Put my hand on her. And I just said all the light scriptures that were going through. I just, re I just commanded and repeated them. And I had her repeat after me so that my voice was releasing light on her. And her own voice, as she repeated them, was releasing light in her. So she was decreeing them. Only the scriptures. Only the scriptures. Only the scriptures. And then I said, now, open your eyes. And I took my hand. And I made in the image of God. And God covers his hands with lightning and commands it, speaks, to strike its mark. I put my hand in front of her eyes. I said, keep your eyes open and stare into my palm. I opened my eyes. She right away does this. I said, no, open your eyes and stare into my hand. And she goes like this. And I go, in the name of Jesus right now, I decree the son of righteousness is arising on you with healing in his wings and his beams of light. That you are full of light. That the eyes of your heart right now are flooded with light. And I just repeated all of the light scriptures that we're going to talk about tonight. And I shot light into her eyes because my hand. Come on. Come on. This is real. Yeah. This is real. Yeah. This is real. You have what you believe. And the Bible says we have it. And I was shooting light into her eyes. She's doing this. She's staring into my palm of my hand. I'm decreeing the light into her eyes. She closes her eyes. She opens them. And they're brown and not cloudy anymore. They change color. And I wasn't the only one that saw it. I wasn't the only one that saw it. Okay, the guy across the, the way sitting there watching me, he goes, whoa, did you see that? Her eyes turned color. I'm like, genius. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They did. You, you were there yet? Come on. Come up here. Was it genius or what? Come on. Come on. It was real. Come on. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> My brother, tell me your name again. Diego. Diego. You were sitting there when I prayed for that pastor. I was. What happened? Well, she... Tell her what, what, tell her, what her eyes looked like beforehand. Right. So if you all have ever seen people that might have blindness, like they're, they have like a fog over their eyes, some of them do. Well, that's what this... Yeah, if that's what that's called. It's, it looked like there was a cloud over her eyes, and so I'm sitting there, and I'm like, okay, let's see this stuff, right? So, so you're a little skeptical. I'm a philosopher, so yeah. But, you know, you know, like, it's all right. So, so I'm watching, and then she does this thing where she puts her hand over it, and she moved it, and that stuff was gone. <laughs> I mean, it was as brown as anybody's eyes ever was. And so, yeah, it was about from here to where you are. You could see her eyes change color. Uh, they were gray, and then they were not. <laughs> Can we give God... Diego, bro, thanks. You're awesome, man. <laughs> Told ya! No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just saying. No. <laughs> okay, look. When Jesus went to heal the blind guy, remember the guy born blind from birth, and the disciples said, who sinned his mother or him, that he should be born blind? And, God, and Jesus said, neither, but he is blind, so that the glory of the Lord may be manifest upon him. And then he goes, while there's still daylight, we have to walk in the light. And he goes, I am the light of the world. And then he spat in the clay, and he healed the guy. Why did he say that? Because he's using light to heal him. Do you know that light particles cling to our DNA? What's in spit? He was making a light bandage for that guy, God. <sighs> Who has eye problems? <laughs> Put your hand in front of your eyes. And even if you don't have eye problems, and you want to see in the spirit? Okay, don't do this, okay? I have people do this all the time. They keep their eyes closed. <laughs> I have to go, no, open your eyes and look into the light. Okay, so put your hand in front of your eyes. Look into your palm and say this scripture from Malachi 4.2. It's in the Amplified Classic. It says that he rises on us with healing in his wings and his beams, beams of light. Are you ready? Now say, the sun of righteousness is arising on me now with healing in his beams of light, in his wings and his beams. Right now, the light of Christ is coming like lightning out of my hand and my voice. Going into my eyes, 
My eyes are being flooded with light. So my soul is being healed. And my eyes are being healed. Right now, Jesus, the son of righteousness, the light of the world, is arising on me with healing. 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 In his wings and his beams of light. Beams of light. Beams of light. Lightning strike. Lightning strike. Filling my eyes. Healing my soul. Healing my eyes. Now in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. Now start clapping and praising really loud. Come on. Somebody's eyes are tearing right now. Who are they? Tearing. Your eyes are tearing. You're getting healed. It's a sign you're being healed. If your eyes are watering, you're being healed. You're being healed right now. Now look, that scripture. Let's put that up on the board. Malachi 4.2. It actually says that. That he arises on us with healing in his wings and his beam. The word arise there. It actually means to bring forth into the light, to shine, to be bright, and to be resplendent. That's why the Amplified says the wings and the beams. Because of the way that word arise translates into the light. Okay, remember Jesus is the light of the world. Now can we put that up there? Malachi 4.2. Let me tell you something. That word healing there, it's the word marpe, and it means a couple things. Number one, it means sound of mind. Again, the light heals your soul. Your mind is part of your soul and your physical body because the word healing means sound of mind. So if you ever have a trauma that you go through, you can put your hand on top of your head and go, oh, Jesus is the light of the world. He's the son of righteousness. He's arising on me with healing, sound of mind, marpe in his wings and his beams of light. And I will put... I won't be depressed or anxious or fearful anymore. I won't be upset or traumatized. I'll, I'll go forth and gamble like a calf, relief from the, released from the stall, and leap for joy. You want to leap for joy? Be filled with the light. Be filled with the light. Then you become what healing means, marpe, sound of mind. Sound of mind. It also means a cure. The word healing means a cure, meaning the light can cure you. It can cure you of dysfunction in your soul. It can cure your, 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 your body of diseases. I, I, uh, people in, in uh, Holland, uh, years ago they were listening to my light teaching. They had an autistic son. The autistic son, three years old, at three years old he'd never made a single sound. Not a grunt, not a groan, not a word, nothing. No sound at all. Three years old. He would go and do this to the cabinets. Open, close, open, close, open, close. Doors, open, close, open, close. Drawers, open, close, open, close. Wouldn't look anybody in the eye. You try to touch him, he'd scream. Oh, he didn't scream. I'm sorry. He'd freak out and he'd run away, but he wouldn't make a noise. He wouldn't make a noise. Okay? So what do they do? They start soaking him in the light. Because when the sun of righteousness arises on you with healing and his wings and his beams of light, you become marpe, sound of mind, tranquil in mind. You get healed, and it becomes a cure, the cure for the things that are ailing you. And they soaked that boy for like six months, and nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened. They kept on going. They kept on decreeing light scriptures, the light of Christ, bringing life to him, over him. And then one day, here comes the lady that does the therapy. They always film it. They film, they set up the camera, and they run through the therapy. And, and that day, as that lady was walking him through the therapy, all of a sudden, a single cry <laughs> came out of that little boy. Next day, he walks up to his grandma, takes her face in his hands, looks her right in the eye, and kisses her on the mouth. Then he started to talk. And he stopped doing the repetitive actions. 
Now, it's like 10 years later, 8 years later, he rides horses, he speaks three languages, he goes to school, he plays sports. He's no longer severely autistic because the sun of righteousness arose on him with healing in his wings and his beams of light. We've been through traumas. How many of you have been through a trauma? you got to get healed of that right now because then you... He'll rise on you with healing. And you'll become what healing means. Marpe, sound of mind, tranquil of mind. It'll be a cure for that trauma, and then you can prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Put the hand on top of your head. Put the other hand on your heart, okay? And say with me, Lord God, I've been through a lot of trauma. But when the son of righteousness, the light of the world, Jesus Christ, who is a light being, who lives inside of me, feels my soul. I will be healed of every trauma, every stressor, every shipwreck, every pain, every storm, every crisis that I've ever had to live through. And I won't struggle with the pain and the grief and the memories that those things have put in my soul, I decree light. The light of Jesus Christ, the Son of Righteousness, is arising on my soul, my mind, my will, and emotions with healing, 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 healing in His wings and His beams of light. Beams of light shining. Throughout my entire soul, filling my mind, filling my will, filling my emotions, destroying every trauma, cleansing me of every painful memory, light coming out of my hands, light coming out of my mouth. I'm becoming bright, resplendent, filled with light, lightning strikes, filling my body, filling my soul. Healing me now in the name of Jesus. Light driving out darkness of pain, of grief, of fear, of, of depression, of trauma. Right now, in Jesus' name, I'm going into homeostasis filled with peace because the light is curing me. Thank you, Lord. Now I'll give God a big praise. I just saw a picture of somebody's eyebrow twitching. Is somebody eye, somebody's eyebrow twitching? I don't know. Why did I see that picture of somebody's eyebrow t twitching? Is anybody's eyebrows twitching? Were they twitching when you prayed? Why am I seeing that? Who is that? Is that somebody online? Who is that? Who is that? Anybody in here? Why am I seeing that picture? Is that you, ma'am? Was your eyebrow twitching? Your husband, how do you know? Your eyebrow, oh, your husband's eyebrow has been twitching for years? Oh, he's getting healed right now. Okay. All right, everybody point your hand towards her. What's his name? Where is he? He's at home. Listen to me. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. That's a scientific fact. Johnny does not need to be here. He's going to get healed right now. I had that word of knowledge. God sent his word and, it he, and he healed them. God's word does not return void unto them, but will accomplish that for which has been sent. Okay, Johnny's eyebrows is about to stop twitching. How long has he had it? It's been years, multiple years. Years. Okay, did it start after a trauma happened to him? Yes. It did. Can you tell us what the trauma was? Uh, several things. He lost a 32-year-old daughter. And he also lost his job. A death of, of his, his baby girl and his job. Do you think he was wounded in his soul from that trauma? So we're going to pray that his soul is healed first so he can prosper and be in health even as his soul prospers. Do you hear me? 
Okay, so ready? Repeat after me. We're sending this to Johnny. Ready? Say, Lord God, we intercede as the ecclesia together in agreement. Jesus, the light being, the light of the world, lives in each one of us. Our voice releases his light. Our hands send out lightning. We're sending out decrees of healing to Johnny's soul and his body. And our decrees will be established because Jesus' light will shine upon our ways. So right now, in Jesus' name, we decree that the Son of Righteousness is arising on Johnny's soul and his body with healing in his wings and his beams. We send beams of light to Johnny's soul to be healed of all trauma. The trauma of the death of his child and the trauma of his loss of his job. And we send out light, beams of Jesus' healing light onto his, healing, onto his physical body. And we command that irritating eyebrow twitch to stop right now in Jesus' name. He's filled with light. He's filled with light. He's filled with light. He's filled with light. The light of Jesus Christ. The light brings life. In him is a fountain of life. Psalm 36. In him is the fountain of life. In his light we see light. In his light, Johnny will see light. Because it's a fountain of life to Johnny's soul and his body. Okay, now stay right there. Johnny's a very tender person. Is that true? Yes. Yes, he's got a very tender heart. Yes, he has. He speaks tenderly. Yes, he does. See that? Why did God tell me that? Because he wants you to know it's working. He gave me a word of knowledge about Johnny so that you guys would know that your decrees right now are healing Johnny by your sending your light to him. Now, I want you all to clap three times. Two, go. Three. Ready? One, two, three. Go again. 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 Go again. Go again. Go again. Okay, now shout a praise. Come on, shout. Okay, so now I see the, the, the jiggling. It's increasing and it's getting worse. So that means he's about to get healed. Thank you, Lord. Now I bind that spirit, that spirit of trauma. I command trauma to break in his soul. And I cast that spirit of infirmity, that afflicting spirit, that tormenting spirit out. I said out. I said out. I judge you in the court of heaven now. Now release him. I loose him now in Jesus' name. Okay, now. You're going to text him, and you're going to let me know what happens. Let's give God another praise. <laughs> when am I supposed to be done, just so I know? Okay. Yes, please do. When I saw that, I was like, no way, dude. She has no idea. No idea. Breaking. See, the, the light. We are the clay vessel. The light comes from inside of us, guys. You know that, it, 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 look, if, if you lay in bed at night and you put your hands on your belly and you just focus on who lives in yeah. you and you release him, you can even see yourself filling with light as it spreads more and more and more into your body. You know, the very first miracle I had was in prison. I had a growth, a big, huge growth on my, top of my hand. And it hurt. So I'd rub it a lot and play, and like play around with it, try to get it to feel better. And so I started, I started, I just got a revelation about the light. 
So I started laying there at night, and I would picture like a Xerox machine. You know how the light bar goes? I picture that going through my body. So one day I'm at mail call. Uh, they're waiting for a letter, and I started rubbing my hand again, and I'll, I went, and it was gone. That was my very first miracle. And it happened through the light, by meditating on the light. Do you know that it can make you look younger? It says that Jesus, on the Mount of Transfiguration, it says that Jesus' countenance was changed. And his face became brighter than the sun, and his clothing became as white as light. Look, I'm 58 years old, and I'm getting younger. I'm not getting older. I'm getting younger. Okay? So I want you to put your hands on your belly, and I'm going to read you this scripture. We're going to decree it. This is, in fact, put it up on the board. Hebrews 1, 3 in the Amplified Classic. Deaf ears are about to, uh, people that have ear problems are about to be healed. Okay. Okay, this is Hebrews 1, 3. Look at this. This is talking about Jesus. He, meaning Jesus, is the sole expression of the glory of God, the light being, the outraying or radiance of the divine. And he, meaning Jesus, is the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature, upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power. Look, Jesus is a light being. Not only is he a light being, he's outraying the radiance of God from in here out. What does that do for you? He's the very perfect imprint and very image of God's nature. Look, as Jesus outrays his light from inside of you, he is transmitting into your soul and your body information. What information? The very imprint of God. The very nature of God. Look, whenever they take a negative and they want to put it on photographic paper, they put the photographic paper down, they take the negative, and they shine light through it. And the light hits the negative, the negative that's in you, and it comes onto the photographic paper and makes a reverse image of the positive on the, the paper so that the very image that was on that negative can become positive and imprinted on that paper. That's what happens with Jesus in you. He is the very image of God, the very perfect imprint of God. And his light sends that image through all the negative and the darkness in our soul and makes a perfect imprint of God on our soul, our mind, our will, and emotions, and our physical body. This light carries information. Why do you think they have what they call that uh, infrared, those, those cables? What is it? Fiber optics. Those cables. What are those cables doing? They're light. <laughs> They're lights inside that cable and they're sending information via those fiber optic light cables. Jesus imprints his information, his image, his likeness on you via his light. That's why you lay there at night. You put your hand in your belly and you say, you are a light being. You are the radiance of the divine. You're the perfect image and imprint of God's nature. And I release your light with my faith, with my hands, with my voice to fill me in every place of darkness, every place of sickness, every place of disease. Put your hands on your belly right now. Close your eyes. Picture the light being inside of you. This is the truth. He lives inside you, Christ, the hope of glory. Picture that light being in your spirit, man, outraying, outraying the radiance of the divine Father God into every area where you are afraid, where you're unsure, where you're filled with doubt, where you've been hurt by your children, where a friend betrayed you, where your husband turned on you, where your wife said something mean and awful and terrible to you, send the light of God's presence, the light being outraying into all your pain, into all your trauma, into every place you need healing, into every place where you have doubt. Right now, picture the light flooding your body, flooding your mind, flooding your soul. Flooding where that pain is in your physical body, where that joint 
is out of out of whack, where your ears are deaf, where your eyes are blind, or your or there's arthritis, or there's a stomach disease or disorder. Shine that light right now. Now everybody look at that scripture and I want you to say it out loud. And as you do, believe it's happening. Ready? On three. One, two, three. Jesus is the sole expression of the glory of God, the light being, the outraying or radiance of the divine, and he is the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature, upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power. Put your hand on your neighbor and start decreeing the scripture over them. Jesus is the light being. He lives in you. He lives in you. His radiance is shining out of you. He's doing a perfect imprint of God's nature on you. Right now. Jesus, right now. Right now. Thank you, Lord. Right now. Right now. Yes. Yeah, come on, Pastor, say it. I'm hearing this right now. Every negative pornographic image that you have seen, I'm speaking right now, probably more to men than women, God says he wants to shine that light and burst every image right now, every dark negative image that you have ever ingested into your spirit and your soul and your body. Right now, we want to, we're going to release that. Do you want to do you want me to do it? Yeah. So, Father, right now, in, in the name of Jesus, we ask that the Son of Righteousness, in the light of heaven's glory, the expression, the expressed image of his person, to come into the neurons, into the synapses, into the dendrites in your mind right now, where neuropathways have formed around these images that come back up in cyclical repetition. In Jesus' name, we release the light of the glory of the gospel of God into your belly, into your heart, into your mind, into your will, into your emotions. In Jesus' name, we release heaven's thunderbolts right now the lightnings of God right now into your mind man and woman you have been struggling with cyclical addiction over and over again this night the blood of Christ the righteous blood of heaven's lamb is bursting forth through every dark place in your mind and your soul in Jesus name tonight it ends tonight it dies tonight is destroyed by the power of God we adjure this thing to leave your mind your soul and your body in Jesus name Jesus name and I judge those sexual fertility gods and goddesses that are behind those perverse spirits that have driven you to the altar of pornography in the name of Jesus. They keep on keeping you in a repetitive cycle of pornography because they burned those images of those devils on your brain and on your soul. But the light is erasing them and the court is judging those gods and goddesses right now and we break our agreement. Say, I break my agreement. Say, I break my agreement. Say, I break my agreement with our sexual fertility gods and goddesses right now in the name of Jesus. Now, 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 now. A lot of you women have been attacked in the night, sexually touched by demons. Am I right? Yes? Yes? It's those, it's those monsters. They have found an altar in your bloodline. Say, Lord God... In Jesus' name, I take every evil altar that was dedicated in my bloodline to sexual fertility gods and goddesses that are attacking me in the night and aging me, causing me to age quicker. I take them to court. I repent for whatever I have in common. And I ask that this court break apart those altars in my soul and in my bloodline. The light of Christ, burning them away in Jesus' name. And I bind the action of those demonic spirits now. 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 Now in Jesus' name. You know, they do, they, they, that's my personal bone to pick right now. Because they steal your youth. 
How do you think these witches always look so hot and gorgeous 12 years, 20 years later? They come to the meetings trying to shipwreck the meetings and they always look perfect and flawless because they're sucking our youth from us, siphoning us like gas. Don't even think they're not. I'll camp on it more later. But that's what I'm going after right now. Why do you think Sarah and Abraham were barren? Because they were moon worshippers. <laughs> but when they built an altar to God, boom. In their old age, they're having babies. Sarah's so hot, kings are kidnapping her. <laughs> After Sarah dies, Abraham like has way many more kids. Homie was like happening. When, when before the Bible says he was impotent and she was barren. Wow. Talk about let's get it on, okay? Because he came up from underneath that idolatry. Yeah. So good. You with me? Yeah. Don't even think they're just driving you to, to watch pornography. They're doing that. They're attacking you in the night. They're stealing your youth. They're causing you barrenness. They're causing you uh, hormonal issues, hot flashes. Weight gain, hormonal weight gain. I'm going to fish. Mm. I'm doing a collection. Just saying. Okay, we're going to do two more, and then, then we're going to believe for my miracles and your miracles tonight. Thank you, Lord. Okay, go to this one. Luke 11. You guys have it? 34 through 36, put that up on the board. Are we ready? Your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye or your conscience is sound and fulfilling its office, your whole body is what? Full of light. <laughs> what does that mean? Your eye. The eye is the window to the soul. When your eye even says your eye or your conscience, what's your conscience? It's part of your mind. It's part of your soul. When your soul is sound and fulfilling its office, your mind, will, and emotions, it's because your whole body is full of light. See, look, every part of your soul has an office. Your mind has an office. God created it to think right thoughts, to have a clean imagination, to reason rightly. Okay? It has an office that it holds, to have a memory bank that's clean. That's not full of bad memories that you're dwelling on all the time. Your will has an office to make spirit-led decisions, not wounded soul-led decisions. Your emotions have an office. God created your emotions to, to be filled with God-given fruit of the spirit emotions. Kindness, gentleness, peace, love, self-control. But we are thinking wrong thoughts, we're making bad decisions, we're feeling evil, ugly emotions. Why? Because we're full of darkness. But your mind will be sound of fulfilling its office, thinking right thoughts, reasoning rightly, having a clean imagination. When what? Your whole body's full of light. Your will will be sound of fulfilling its office. You'll be led by the Holy Ghost. When? When your whole body's full of light. Your emotions, you'll feel peaceful, joy, happiness, peace. Not all anxiety and depression and everything else. And when does it happen? When your whole body's full of light. Put your hand on top of your head. Say it with me. Say, I release the light of Jesus Christ. The light being. The light of the world. The outraying radiance of God's divine nature. Into my mind. So my mind will be sound and fulfilling it's office. I think right thoughts. I reason rightly. My imagination is clean. My memory bank is healed. Because my whole body is full of light. My will is sound and fulfilling its office. Because my whole body is full of the light of Christ. I make spirit-led decisions. So I prosper in everything I do. My emotions are sound and fulfilling their office. Because my whole body is full of the light of Christ. I have fruit of the Holy Spirit emotions. I don't have depression. 
I don't have the darkness of fear, anger, bitterness, resentment, criticism, judgment, upheaval, worry. I am sound and fulfilling my office in my emotions because my whole body is full of light. Now give God a praise. Okay, one more, and then we're going to work miracles. How many of you want to know revelation from God? To be able to solve any problem. To have a spirit of wisdom. To be intimate and deep in a relationship with God. Well, I'm going to tell you how to do it. Ready? Ephesians 1.17. Go to it. Okay, ready? Just keep it right there until I tell you to change it to the next verse. Ready? For I always pray to God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets, and the deep, intimate knowledge of him. So we all want the spirit of wisdom, right? We all want revelation, right? We all want insight into mysteries and secrets, right? We all want that deep and intimate knowledge of him, right? Next verse tells us how to get it. Ready? 118. We get it by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. So you can know and understand the hope to which he's called you to and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints, his set-apart ones. Look, you get wisdom and revelation and the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the deep, intimate knowledge of God and the secrets and the mysteries by having the eyes of your heart. That's your soul, by the way. Flooded with light. The word heart there means the soul. Look, your spirit already knows the deep, intimate secrets of God. It's the Holy Ghost. Your spirit already has no problem being intimate with God, knowing the secrets and mysteries of heaven. So why don't we know it all? Because your soul is in the way. Your soul is the blockade. It's a, it's a rotten filter. It's wounded. It's dark. So it can't perceive the wisdom and revelation. It can't get the mysteries and the secrets. But when your eyes of your heart, the word eyes are the windows to the soul. The word heart means the soul. When your soul gets healed and filled with light, then it gets out of the way. And there's a clear, a clear funnel, a clear flow of the prophetic, of understanding, of breakthrough insights, of downloads and everything that come from your spirit, through your soul, into your mind so that you can understand the secrets and mysteries. Before, your mind couldn't handle it, couldn't receive it because it was full of darkness. But when the eyes of your heart are flooded with light, you'll receive all those things and you'll know the hope to which he's called you to. Look, words of knowledge. When I operate in, in the light, I get words of knowledge, like the eyebrow thing. <laughs> Who would have known that somebody's eyebrow has been twitching for years? That's crazy. That's not an ordinary word of knowledge. Like, you have a backache. <laughs> Everybody in the room has a backache, okay? <laughs> You've had a trauma in your life. <laughs> Everybody in the room, okay, eyebrow twitching, that comes from sitting in the light. I remember, and, this, and then we're going to activate. I was in Seattle. And this guy, the, the room was packed. There was 800 people there. People were leaning against the walls because there was no seats left, okay? And all of a sudden, I get this word of knowledge. I said, okay, first I said, somebody here, you've been nickel and diming somebody to death. If that's you, come up. So this lady comes up to me. And, and oh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I said it backwards. I said, somebody here has a knee problem and your knee is locked. If that's you, come up. So she comes, this lady comes up to me. So I heard this word of knowledge for her. She's been nickel and diming people to death. So I leaned in and I said, I did it secretly not to embarrass her. I said, have you been nickel and diming people to death? And she goes, <laughs> oh my Lord, Jesus. It's true. It's true. So I lead her through repentance. I didn't even have to pray for her knee. I just prayed for her to stop nickeling and to repent for nickeling and diming people to death. And without me even saying anything about her knee, all of a sudden she's like, 
Oh my God, I'm healed. She runs up on the stage. She goes, look at me, look at me. She starts doing the can-can up on the stage. Look at me. God gave me a word of knowledge about her, why her knee was locked up. Because she was nickel and diming people to death. God wants to fill you with light so you get a word of knowledge that can bring somebody a breakthrough in their healing. Then I was standing up on stage and I said, Ah, oh, and somebody else here, uh, you had an accident on a tree stump. A tree stump. Who's that? Accident on a tree stump. Way in the back. There's these people leaning against this w- the wall, this lady and, and, and this guy. And she looks at me and she goes, It's him. Him. And I go, uh, sir, is that you? Did you have an accident on a tree stump? And he goes, no. And she goes. <laughs> I go, well, she's trying to say you did. Did you have an accident on a tree stump or not? And he goes, no. And she goes. I go, she's insisting. That's you. Did you have an accident on a tree step or not? And he goes, well, I guess so. And I'm like, get your butt up here right now. So he comes up. Comes up on stage. Stand there. I go, so look, what happened? He goes, well, I had an accident on a tree stump. I'm like, you need more light. And he's like, yeah, I was standing on a tree stump, cutting down another tree when I fell off the tree stump, and I tore my meniscus, and they had to take it out, and now I have no meniscus. And I always have problems with my knees, and it hurt, and it's stiff, and he goes, and then I got into an accident. I was on my motorcycle, and somebody sideswiped the same side with the knee. I'm like, man, you, <laughs> I break that curse in Jesus' name, right? And he's telling me all the story. I said, okay, so I stand back. I said, I'm going to pray for you. So I stand back, and I look at him, and then the light hits me, and I go, you don't even believe in miracles. Found out he was a Baptist. Oh, sorry. I said, you don't even believe in miracles. He goes, no, I don't. And I'm like, and you don't think me as a woman should even be up here preaching? He goes, that's right. And I go, I want you to pray after me right now. I'm, I'm like militant like that. Just repeat that for me, I said. Said, say, I repent for my unbelief. And he's going, I repent for my unbelief. <laughs> now he's scared, right? I'm like, I'm in the warrior mode. I repent for my unbelief. And he's like, I repent for my unbelief. I go, and I receive my miracle now. I go, I receive my miracle now. So then I command his knee to be healed. I commanded that spirit to come off. And I command a new creation of a new meniscus. I go, now test it. And he goes, Wow, thanks. <laughs> Put your hand on top of your head and the other one in front of your eyes. Keep your eyes open. Stare at the palm of your hand. Say, Lord God, I want a spirit of wisdom and revelation into the mysteries and secrets of God and the deep, intimate knowledge of him. I have it by having the eyes of my heart flooded with light so I can know the hope to which he's called me. I decree the light is shining into my soul, flooding me, flooding the eyes of my heart, removing all darkness so I can see in the spirit in Jesus' name. Open your eyes and look into your hand. There you go. Okay. Say, I send beams of light into my heart right now so I can see you, so I can know you, so I can hear you, so I can follow you. Fill me with your light. Brighter. Brighter, 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 brighter. I receive secrets. I receive mysteries. I receive wisdom. I receive revelation. I receive it all. My eyes and my heart. 
are flooded with light. Now, start praising God. All right, now let's break into groups as we uh, walk into the activation. Okay. Who has pain in their body? Okay, some of that pain is going to go tomorrow, but some of it's going to go tonight. If you have pain in your body, I want this that pain in the body group to come here right now. Okay? Now, we're all going to get involved. This isn't just me. You're not going to just watch me work a miracle. You're going to get involved. Okay? Now I want eyeball people. Who has eye problems? Eye problems. Come over to this side, right here. Eye problems over here. Ear problems in the middle. Okay, what? Uh, pick one. <laughs> You'll get them both. Oh, boy. Okay, so now, let's have the ear problems here and the eye problems there. Now, all you people, turn, talk to each other. Find out where's your pain. Where's the pain? Find out. Interview each other. Okay? Find out where the pain is. Okay, well, start with one thing at a time, okay? All right, then, come on, interview each other. Pair up, okay? And then I want you to start decreeing. Let's put on uh, Malachi 4.2 on the scripture. Are these the eye people? Okay? I want you to start beaming light into each other's eyes. Decreeing light scriptures, okay? You, you help each other, all right? And let's put on Malachi 4.2. Where's my ear people? I'll take the ear people here in the middle. Ear people right here. Ear people, buzzing, ringing, deafness, buzzing, ringing, deafness, okay? Heidi can have a piece of gum, buzzing, ringing, yes? Come closer to me. Okay, what do you got? I believe. Buzzing. Ring. 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 
Wave at me when the when the buzzing goes away. When the ringing stops. Why is everybody staring at me? Hey, get busy. Get busy, people. Come on, get busy. Start praying. Keep praying for each other. I'm going to get to you. Okay? Keep busy. Okay. On you, sir. You can hear? You normally can't hear. Okay. So, with this crowd, you cannot hear. So, you're trying to gain your hearing back. Did you also have ringing and buzzing? No? But your hearing is increasing right now? Thank you. Let's see. It's beginning. It begins like that. So, we just keep raising him. We thank you, Lord. We keep raising you. Thank you, Lord. 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 That's weird. He's got a leg for I judge that through the support of him. I'm under the blood. I'm under grace. I reach up and down the spirit. That's to leave me now. In the name of Jesus now. Thank you, Lord. 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 Now I loose you from that accusation. I loose you from that accusation. I loose you from right now. I'm under grace and blood. Every idolatry of that spirit has to let me go. I judge and support. Right now, and I see blood and grace. Thank you, Lord. Command you to be loose, 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 loose. Right now, in Jesus' name. Right now, I thank you, Lord. Right now, bring your buzzing to say, I'm under grace, blood, and Jesus, and the grace of God. I'm loosed. I'm loosed from this accusation. I'm loosed from this accusation. In Jesus' name, right now. Now, 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 now. 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 I'm under the blood and grace. What's your name? Bill. Bill, how did you lose the hearing? Uh, shooting a lot of guns over the years without hearing protection when I was young. So mostly on the uh, left side? Left ear, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how long has that been since you were a child? Yeah, Th 35, 40 years. 35, 40 years. How much less hearing did you have in that ear? A huge percentage. Huge percentage. So it was way harder to hear in this ear yeah. than that ear. Especially in crowds. Especially in crowds. Yeah. Everybody start talking. Now, let me have a Kleenex. Kleenex, turn around here so everybody can see you. So this is the, the right ear is the good ear. Okay, so you can hear really good. Better ear. Better ear. Let's have a Kleenex. Thank you. Stick that in that ear. Okay. Everybody start talking. Okay, I'm going to say stuff, and while they're talking, and you're going to repeat what I'm saying. You ready? Hey, everybody. My name is Bill. My name's Bill. I used to shoot guns. I used to shoot guns. 
when I was a kid. And I went deaf. And I went deaf. Almost deaf. Almost deaf. In this ear. In this ear. But now I've regained my sight. But now I've regained I mean, my hearing. My hearing, yes. And my sight. Yeah. And now? And now? I'm the hottest guy in the room. I, <laughs> Say it. Go ahead. I'm the hottest guy in the room. Give God a big praise for that. Okay, keep praying. Keep praying. What's your name? Billy. Billy, what was wrong with your ear? Well, I was having a sore throat, and it was, I could hear, you know, it was attached to my ear. So the sore throat was affecting your ear? Mm -hmm. How's the sore throat now? It's going away. The sore throat's going away? Mm -hmm. Now, what, what, how did it affect the ear? Well, you know, your hearing's kind of tied to your throat. Connected to the throat? Mm -hmm. So it was like, like plugged? It's clogged. The ear was clogged? Yes. How's it doing now? It's coming through. It's coming through? Mm -hmm. It's opening up? Yeah. So thank you, Lord. Now let's do the rest of it. Ready? Thank you, Father. We thank you. I judge that demonic spirit of Assyria that's on his throat right now. He will not saw his throat anymore. I command that he's not dwelling among the tombs in the morning in the name of Jesus right now. And that he will have no more swelling in the lymph nodes. I judge that demonic spirit that's on him right now in the name of Jesus right now. And I command that ear to unplug right now and all that infection and bacteria to go in the name of Jesus now. 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 Okay, now. All the pain should be leaving your throat right now. And your ear should be unclogging even more. Do you feel it? Thank you, Lord. Is it draining? Oh, yeah. You don't sound so muffled now, too. Thank you, Lord. What was the pain level when we first started praying? Mm, about an eight. What's it now? It's going away. It's going away? Are you down to a five, six? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Going down? And the ear? Opening up? Okay. Everybody send light. Ready? Send him light. Say, Lord God, he's not dwelling among the tombs. He's being healed of all trauma. He's being healed of the legal right in his soul that's caused him this ear problem and this throat problem. He's being healed now in Jesus' name. Okay, now I want you to stand right there. Okay, keep praying. Keep praying. light over each other because you're staring at me. Come on, get busy. Busy. Get busy. Praying for each other. Why do you say that? You took your hearing aids out? I, I can hear you. You can hear me? Yes. Okay. It, a lot better, a little bit? A little bit better. Yeah? Okay. Let's do pray one more time because it's getting it's working right now. So thank you, Lord. What's your name? Fred. Fred. Thank you, Lord. You're healing Fred right now. Right now. Are you a veterinarian? Are you a vet? I am. You are a vet? Yes. Okay. That's a word of knowledge. Hold this mic for me. Thank you, Lord. Fred, we command Fred to be healed of all of the um, trauma that he went through in the service. 
you want dynamite or anything like that? Yes, yes. So I heard the word dynamite from yes. Fred. And I heard veteran for Fred. He is a veteran. And I heard dynamite, and he worked as an underground coal miner. So everybody come up here. Come on, we're all involved in this. Lay hands on Fred. We're going to release light to the trauma he went through. Father, we release the light of Jesus Christ on Fred for all of the trauma he went through as a vet that caused him to have deafness, and he's had to wear these, these hearing aids. And we command the damage in his ears from the dynamite explosions in the coal mines to be healed right now the light which is life we decree the light is bringing life to Fred life to his soul life to his ears he's being healed right now being healed right now from that deaf and dumb spirit that was on him from the trauma and from the damage from the dynamite in the coal mines in the name of Jesus now we thank you I loose him I loose him of every accusation and I loose him of the spirit that deaf and dumb spirit has to come out and that his ears are opening in Jesus name now now I'm gonna how's your hearing now I can hear the snapping you can hear the snapping yes yes could you not have heard it before it would have been hard Okay, come up here. Let's test with the Kleenex. Where's the Kleenex? Thank you. Is it both ears, Fred? Both ears. Both ears. Turn around here. Okay, so uh, turn every so everybody can see. Okay, now let's put this right here in this ear. Okay? okay. Now I'm going to whisper in this ear, and you're going to repeat what you hear me saying. Okay? Okay, go ahead. See, I know you're hearing better because I just gave you instructions, and you didn't once look at my lips. Okay? And your hearing aids are out. Let's see them hearing aids. Where are they? Where are your, where's your hearing aids? In my pocket. Okay. Ready? My name is, I didn't get the last. Father, right now, repairing Fred's ear right now. In the name of Jesus, right now. Loose. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My name is Fred. My name is Fred. I'm healed. I'm healed. Now put him out. Loose. Loose. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. He loves me. He loves me. I love my wife. I love Norma. <laughs> She's the hottest thing around. You guys are getting healed right now. You're getting healed. You're getting healed. You're getting healed. Okay, now, go on. Keep, keep praying. Come on, we're working miracles here. Where's my ear people? Where's the rest of my ear people? Is this my... Take care of you first.
somebody in your family like a magic person, a magician, or a something like that? Did you used to listen to rock music? I did listen to rock. Music. Or did you listen to Heart Magic Man? What's that song? He's a magic man. Yes. What was that song? Yeah. yeah. You remember that song? I do. Okay, I think I got a word of knowledge about that. So, say I break. I break. My agreement. My agreement. With the idolatry, With the idolatry of rock music. Of rock music. I, I command. And I command. That the spirit. That spirit. That associated it. That associated it. That, associated it, that, it, that is on my soul. That is on my soul. Will come out. Will come out. Because my soul is filled with light. Because my soul is filled with light. And that rock music. And that rock music. Is not responsible. Is not responsible. Anymore. Anymore. For making me deaf. For making me deaf. For having my ears ring. For having my I reject you, Spirit. I reject you, Spirit. Because I repented. Because I repented of that of that rock music. Of that rock music. I've renounced it. I've renounced I've it. I've broken my agreement I've with it. My agreement with I've it. I've removed it from my I life. I've removed it from my life. I break that altar. I break that altar. Of rock music. Of rock music. I judge it. I judge it. In the court of heaven. In the court of heaven. I judge it in my soul. I judge it in my soul. And I release light. And I release light into my soul. Into my soul. To heal me. To heal me. Of the effects of, the effects of that rock music. Of that rock music. Did you like heart a lot? The band heart. What is that music? After me. What is that music? He's magic, man. I forget what that is. Okay. All right, so now. So, Father, I thank you. What's your name? Deborah. I command this stepping down the spirit. Come out! 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 out. Deborah, I loose you in the name of Jesus now. Right now. Bring that hammer down upon that right now. Jesus, the Jesus now. 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 I command the ears to be recreated. Be recreated. Recreated right now. Open. 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 Open, open, yes. open. Yes. Buzzing, ringing, stop. Yes. Buzzing, ringing, stop. Yes. Buzzing, ringing, yes. stop. Recreate, 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 recreate. Okay, now. Okay, so we got people decreasing here. Decreasing. Ready? I command you, Spirit, you will not hamper anyone. Sad commanding. Loose this woman. Say, I'm under grace and mercy. That idolatrous spirit. That deaf spirit. Has to let me go. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now. 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 The wind of God. 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 There we go. Thank you, Lord. Now repair. Okay, now. I need a light on this person. How is it? How is it? Huh. It's decreasing. It's decreasing. It's smaller, 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 smaller. You're healed. You're healed. Okay, l- eye people. Where's my eye people? Eye people. I people, come over here. I people, I people, I people, I people, I people, I people, I people. What do you got? Rivets? What's a rivet? I need my white screen on the board, please. It's like a line. You still have it? I had it today driving in. Okay, what do you got? Night vision problems. What do you got? Cataract? What size? So let me tell a story. Okay, what do you got? And? Okay. Yes. Okay, come over here. I want you to stare at that screen right there. Okay. 
I want everybody to stare at that white screen, okay? Until that cataract of their floater dissolves and the sight improves. Everybody stare at the white screen. Say with me, the sun of righteousness is arising on me with healing in his wings and his beams of light. Beams of light filling my eyes right now, correcting my vision, burning away cataracts, fixing my eye, causing all sight problems, fixing night vision, fixing nearsightedness, fixing eye infections, fixing all eye diseases. In the name of Jesus, I receive the light of Christ into my eyes right now. And I repent for any idolatrous spirit that it's like Timaeus, Bartimaeus' his father, who was an idol worshiper. I repent for all idols that are stealing my sight. In the name of Jesus, I put myself under the blood of Jesus and under grace. And I also decree that any serpent spirit that's causing the scale of a cataract to be in my eye, I take it to court. I ask the court judge it. I repent for anything I have in common with it. I put myself under grace. And I command that cataract. I command that eye issue to dissolve. I command that floater to dissolve. I command my eyes to be corrected by the light of Christ. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Right now. In Jesus' name. No. Thank you, Lord. Now keep on staring at that. The floater should disappear right away. Let me know when the floater leaves. The cataract should be burning away right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The light brings life. The light brings life. You're filled with life in your eyes. Life in your soul. Right now. Right now. The sun of righteousness arising on you. Healing. In his wings and his beams of light. Right now. Right now. Remember, that lady, the blind pastor, what happened? Her eyes turned color as the sun of righteousness arises on her eyes and her soul with healing. You're becoming Marpe, sound of mine. So, Marpe, sound of mine. Marpe, sound of mine. Marpe, sound of mine. Right now. Your eyes are being cured by the light. Being cured by the light. The eye is the window to the soul. It's being flooded with light. 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 If your eyes are watering, it's because you're getting healed by trauma too. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now let's all start praising God. Keep praising Him. Okay, this woman had buzzing in her ears. She's, she's up to 75% healed. It's working. Okay?
It's starting. Okay. Okay, before you couldn't understand, and now you can hear. You're starting to hear. Is it this here? It's this here. Okay, so I'm going to test you. Okay, so you said that if I would have whispered in your ear before you couldn't hear. How's that floater? It's like it's right on the edge. It's like it goes and it wants to come right back to the edge, but it's normally. So it's getting smaller? Yes. See? Where's that cataract person? Where's my cataract person? Is that you? Cataract? Cataract? Girl, it don't work if you don't, if you don't come up here and play. Where are you? 50% on the cataract. How about you? You don't see the cataract anymore? No, I don't see any change. You don't see any change. Keep staring at that. Light, I need somebody to soak her with light. How's it going? Can you tell? Okay, keep going. I want people to soak all these people with light. Now, who's in pain over here? surgery when they sewed her back up they misaligned her long leg bone so when she went to do the rehab the bone slipped forward and protruded out her arch it hurt you could see it the lump imagine me i had to pray for her the lord told me she had an idol in her life so i led her through a simple prayer Command the trauma in her soul to be healed with the light. And then command the bone to move, and it did. Okay. So, Father, now just put your hands out. Now I command pain to go. I command that demonic spirit, that idolatry spirit, to come out. Come out. Come out. I loose you from that accusation. I loose you. Say, I'm loosed. I'm loosed. I'm loosed. I'm loosed. Jesus, died Jesus died for me to be innocent. I'm righteousness of God in Christ. I'm just because Jesus made me so. I'm in right standing with God because Jesus made me so. So all idolatry spirits have to let me go now. In Jesus' name. Now I want you to start moving around and testing. Moving around. Start checking. As soon as somebody starts having pain, be lessened, come and find me. Back to my people. How's my light people doing? How's my eye people doing? How's my ear people doing? How's my ear guy? How you doing? Better. Okay, how much better? 25. Okay, you didn't move for a long time. Every time I came back to you, you said, nope, I'm still the same. Nope, I'm still the same. Now it's starting to happen. See that? You see that, you guys? Sometimes you have to be, work the miracle. 
Work the miracle. So you're 25% better hearing now. Thank you, Lord. Okay, now I bless that. I bless what God's doing. I command that it more, more. Everybody say more, more. 25%. Now let's make it 50. Let's make it 75, God. We command that this man be filled with light. The brightness of his dawn. He be irradiated. Outraying. Jesus is outranging him. Healing everything he has in common with this. Right now in the name of Jesus. The blood and light. The blood and light. The blood and light. He's flooded, 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 flooded. Jesus coming down from the Mount of Transfiguration covered with light. Light, light, light. Light, light, light. Healed of all trauma. Healed of all idolatry. Right now. More, 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 more light, more light, more light. Yeah? Let me whisper now. people. Amen. Praise God. All right. Amen. It's almost completely gone. But it's it just it's very, very light and just kind of comes in and out. But it's one to ten, how much are you healed? Seven, eight? Yes, eight. You're an eight. Okay. Okay. And also the eye doctor told me that I have op- optical migraines and he said there's no cure. <laughs> liar, liar, pants on fire. All right, well you're being healed now. Okay. All right. I'd say you're almost done. Okay? Look, tonight we had to work the miracles. Normally they pop like that. That's okay. We're in new territory. That God's out front trying to challenge. But we're all right because we're working the miracles and they're happening. Who else had the cataract? How's it going? So you've gotten 50% better? Okay, where can you tell? Um, outside, but light. Yeah, I can't see your cataract at all. Are you sure? No, I'm not sure. Because I don't see it. Okay. Look into my hand, ready? 
I command light to beam into your eyes right now. I judge that serpentine spirit right now. Right now, I judge that that deaf, dumb, and blind spirit right now. I send light into your eyes right now so you can see crystalline clear, and I burn away any residual effects right now in the name of Jesus, right now, right now. The light brings life. In you is a fountain of life. In his light, you see light. 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 Fountain of life. Fountain of life. In his light, you see light. He is the light of the world. You will not be walking in the darkness anymore. We'll have the light, which is life. The eyes of your heart flooded with light. 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 Right now. 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 Son of righteousness, arising only, healing in his wings and his beams. Wings and beams. Wings and beams. Beams of light. Beams of light. Beams of light. A command lightning to strike its mark. A command lightning to strike its mark. Strike its mark. Strike its mark. Right now. Right now. You're warm, he said, because the light. One time I did that to myself, shone light into my eyes for three days straight, burned off my eyelashes. I actually was happy because I was like, it works. <laughs> I burned my eyelashes off. Of course, I was unhappy because I had bald eyelashes, but that's what eyelash serum is for. So anyway, all right, now what? Look at there. And well, if you can't tell, then there's not a cataract there. Because you could tell if you couldn't see. Don't put them glasses on. Go find out a way you can test it and then come back to me. How are we doing? How's my pain, people? Wave at me who feels better. Come up here if you feel better right now. What's your name? Bobby. What'd you have? A bullet in my leg. You had a bullet in your leg? <laughs> How long has it been there? Oh, well, about 15 years. Did it give you pain? Yeah. What kind of pain? Chronic pain. Okay. Like like sharp shooting? Yes. All the time? All the time. 24 and 7? 24 and 7. What's the pain level now? Hallelujah. You don't have no pain? I have no pain. Where's my, where's my metal detector? Heidi, metal detector. Okay, what do you got in your pocket, sir? Take that phone out. Could you feel the bullet with your fingers? No. Take that phone out of your pocket. What, what, do, you got, what do you got there? Okay. Take everything out that might be metal. Do you have a metal knee or anything? Okay. Do you have a belt on? Do you have a belt on? Who has a metal hip? Metal hip. Me where? Come here. Come here. Let me see. Which one? Take that, those keys off. Put your hand on that grommet. On your pants. See that? Put your finger on those grommets. Okay, so that one. See? Goes through skin. That means it goes through skin. Okay, let me see. Let's see if it's gone. All right, turn around. Show me where the bullet is. It's up there. Do you have a belt on? Do you have any grommets on your pants? Okay, so ready? Now put your hand up. Okay, ready? So what was your level of pain before when the bullet was still there? Like a 10. A 10. All the time. All the time. How long, Bobby? About 15 years. 15 years. And you got shot by somebody. Yes, I did. Friend or foe? A foe. A foe? <laughs> okay. Tonight you got healed of that trauma. That's the first step in a metal miracle. You got healed of that trauma. And now what's your pain level now? You had it as a 10 for 15 years. What's it now? Zero. 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 
Let me have a hug. You're welcome. God loves you. Can we give God a praise? Here I am. All right. Who else? Who else had pain God. relieved? Yeah, you did. What? Well, I have a metal ankle. And you have a metal ankle? I have a metal uh, elbow, wrist, and fingers. Okay, so you have metal in three places. Four places. And it's a little less swollen. Um, so it's not as swollen. Does it have pain normally? Yes. What's the pain level normally? Usually about a seven or eight. And what is it now? About a three. Okay, so it's going down. Can you feel? I see a scar. Can you feel the uh, metal with your fingers? Um, a little bit, yes. Try it now. I'm betting it's still some of it's still there because if it was all the way gone, you'd have zero pain. Sometimes it takes a minute for metal to dissolve. The bullet goes faster because it's smaller. I normally see bullets disappear in like a few minutes, right? But the ankle stuff, if it's a big, what do you got in there? Um, it's actually, I have no ankle or no leg bone up to my knee. It's all a metal. That's going to take quite a, a, a bit of time. All right, so, but it is less. You're at a three. What about the elbow and the... They cause more limitation than pain. It's the ankle that has the most pain. What can you not do because of the metal in your wrist and your elbow? Um, just if I move a lot, it really, really hurts. Okay, so moving like how you're doing now, yeah. would that cause you to start it to hurt it or it would take more effort than that? It would probably take more of what I'm doing. Okay, so now this is a seven. It's still kind of swollen, so that means to me that you still have legion on you. Okay, so, but you're getting healed of the trauma first. All right, so give me your hand. Close your eyes. Was that one accident? Say, Lord God, I need to be healed of the trauma of that accident. I've been dwelling among that accident. Is it true that you think about the accident quite often? Yeah. Yeah, like it haunts your thoughts. Is that true? Yeah. Your mom died in the accident. Okay.
the knowledge that she had an infection in her. And I asked her if she had any pain like in her stomach. She said yes. So we're going to heal that infection right now. I knew the pain was going to reduce, and that's why I said the pain is already reducing right now, and you said, yes, it is. So right now, see, so that's the word of knowledge. You're being healed right now, and then that screw is going to disappear in your shoulder. Keep going. Up, 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 up. So you say, by now it would normally hurt. On that arm. Because that's where the screw is. Okay, so. It was the rotator cuff. You had the screw in it. Okay, keep, keep, keep it up there. So you're saying, by now it would hurt. Keep it up. Keep it up. I'm sorry, I'm trying to. You're going to build some muscle tonight. I'll have you doing squats next. No, I'm kidding. Okay. That will be a miracle. <laughs> Me too, amen. No. Okay, keep it up. Still hasn't hurt? Would it normally hurt by now? Yes? Okay. Okay, now put it down. Where's the screw at? You don't know? It's up in the top? Is that the bra strap? I'm sorry. Is that a bra strap? Yes, it is. Okay, does it have a metal clip on it? I don't think so. I think it's plastic. Plastic? Let's see, come on. Okay, now you have also metal in your neck, right? Okay, so that one's gone. All right, so now, turn your head. You got what do you got in there? A plate, a, a, a rod, what do you got? It's, not a, it's a plate, but it turn. Keep going. Keep going. Take my hand. Keep turning your head. Command it to dissolve right now. Right now. Command it to dissolve right now. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you a story while you do that. I went to a prison. And there was a girl there. And uh, she had shot herself in the chest with a 45 so that she wouldn't have to go to prison. They had saved her life, and now she was in prison. And they had to uh, wire together her breastbone with chicken wire like metal, with like metal suture. She said it felt like chicken wire. She could feel it with her fingers. She had a big old long scar down in the middle of her chest. So I looked at her and I said, that's going to disappear. And she looked at me like, yeah, right. Okay, so then I walked away, and I left her alone for about mm, an hour. In the meantime, there was another lady there named Bernadette. She had a metal rod in her neck, and she was like you. Because she had the metal rod, she couldn't move her head. So she walked around with her head straight like this, following me around all day going, P. 
Pay for me, Katie. Pay, pay. Wait, wait, Katie, wait, wait, wait. Pay for me. Wait, Katie, wait, wait, wait. No, no, Katie, wait, wait. Pay for me. She did that all day. But I could tell she wasn't ready. She didn't have enough faith. So I was praying for everybody else. And man, tailbone's moving into place. I said, four people here, you have a tailbone out of place. Who is that? Four people raised their hands. I said, what does it feel like? This it feels like a big ball and it hurts all the time. I said, Holy Spirit's moving the tailbone into place right now. He moved it. They all felt it. It was all flat. It all moved out. Uh, a lady had a, a hernia under, right underneath her breast. Hernia completely disappears. She comes up front. She says, look. She flattened her shirt out. She goes, this is the first time that my boob is bigger than my hernia. <laughs> okay. So miracles were happening all over the place. One lady had a, she got caught in adultery by her husband. And he chased her out in the street and a, a diesel truck ran her over. So her arm was dead. She couldn't move. It just hung there lifeless like the withered man. So I prayed for her, and it actually started, she got feeling back, and she started being able to move it. Okay, so miracles were happening. So anyway, here's Bernadette. Pay for me, Katie. Pay, wait, 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 Katie, wait. Pay for me. Wait, wait. Okay, right? And so finally, it's the end of the day, and there's a prayer line. She's the last one there. I come up there. She's standing. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, but she's not. I could tell she didn't have the faith. So I'm looking at her and going, what do I do, God? And he said, ask the other lady about the metal wire in her chest. I forget what her name was. Marilyn. I said, hey, Marilyn, how's that metal wire? And she said, well, I don't know. I haven't checked. And she reaches up, and as soon as she touched her chest, I saw it on her face. She started bawling. She's just like, she goes, I'm shocked. I can't believe it. I'm shocked. I can't believe it. Because the mental wire was gone. Then I knew I could do Bernadette. So I turned to Bernadette. I said, you ready? She goes, yeah, ready, ready, ready. <laughs> so I looked at her and the Lord said, shake her up. So I put my hand on top of her head. And I don't suggest you do this until, unless the Lord says so. And I went. <laughs> and she was like this. <laughs> and that metal rod completely disappeared. I have a picture of her because they didn't let us bring in the cameras, but they let us do a still photo camera, no video camera. Her head's all the way turned like this looking at me because the metal rod disappeared. Father, we ask for that same miracle. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Command metal to become bone. Right now, in Jesus' name, I command all the stiffness to go, and I speak to that spirit of infirmity. I say, "Come out! Come out! I loose you." Somebody had nausea. I don't know if it's you. Somebody else had nausea all the time. It's, you're being healed of that right now. Nausea is being healed. You had like waves of nausea. Who's that? Who's that? It's back in the back. You're being healed right now. You're being healed right now. Right now. Now I want you to start turning your neck. Come on. Come on. Keep trying. It's going better, you said? Yes. It's getting... So you can move it further? Yes. I can. Keep going. You're going to hit 50% real quick here. Yeah. It's been a long time since I could... Uh, when I drive, i got to stop in a certain position... So I can see. So you can turn your head and look? Yes. Okay, keep going. Because you're going to hit 50%. You're hitting 50%. It's probably almost 50%. You're almost 50% right now. So you're saying you're having 50% more movement than you had before. Yeah. Because that metal's dissolving and turning to bone. Okay, keep going. I think you're going to hit 75% at least tonight. So I decree that right now. You're going to have 75% more movement. Keep your shoulders stationary and turn your head only. Okay? Thank you, Lord. Right now. That stiffness is leaving. That metal is dissolving. Bone is taking its place. Right now. Pain is departing. Restructuring. Pain on this side. Okay, 
You said you had no pain on that side? But this side still hurts. You normally have pain on this side? Yeah, both. Now let me come over here. Ready to go. <laughs> Keep on going. Right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is our turning point right now. Everybody start praying in tongues, please. This is our breaker right now for the rest of the meeting. The bullet started it. Amen. The bullet started it. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's, it's coming right now. Just keep on praying in the spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you. Breaker anointing the angel. And loose the angel and the Holy Ghost right now. Right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Tell me when the pain disappears over here. Thank you, Lord. That has no pain. So now there's no pain over here. Oh, no. There's a little bit. Okay, there's pain right here. No pain here. And there's no pain here. So where's that other? Right there is the pain. Okay, keep on going. Okay. Keep praising him. Keep praising him. That ankle's getting smaller. That ankle's getting smaller because she's getting more and more healed. See? Legion's going to come out. Come out, Legion. Come out, Legion. She's not dwelling among the tombs. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, that pain should be receding a lot, is it? It's receding, yeah. Yeah, I just heard that from the Lord, so keep going. Come on, come on. Pray in tongues. Pray in the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes God saves the best for last. While you're doing that, I'll just tell you the story. One time, it was like one of those meetings where, you know, things weren't going very fast, kind of like how it was tonight. Uh, just saying. Okay. And this girl had had a gas can in her hand, and it blew up. Something, she clicked the metal, and ignited, it blew up, blew her stomach apart, blew her arms open. She almost had to have amputation. She had a um, metal wires running her fingers. She had metal bolts holding her arm onto her body. And uh, she had her therapist there who could feel the metal bolts and the metal wires and all of that. And uh, at the very end of the meeting, Jesus, she said she felt liquid metal pouring out of her arm. And then we tested her with a metal detector and she had absolutely no metal left. I had the pastors test her. I tested her. Everybody tested her. And this therapist came up and said, I can't feel the bolt. I used to be able to feel it with my fingers. I used to be able to ping the strings like a guitar. And uh, I can't feel the strings anymore. And that happened at the very end of the meeting. It's like sometimes you have to work the miracles. Sometimes they happen right away. And then other times you got to work them. So here we are. We're working the miracles. It's like, you know, that's just the way it is. So how's that pain now? It's a lot less. But it, it, what it is is uh, now it feels more like muscles. That just so it just feels like muscle tension from being pain for so long? So the actual pain pain is gone? Just about. A yep. little tiny bit. but yep. and, how, and the other side is gone? The other side is so gone. you saying you had pain on both sides all the time. What was the level of pain you had on both sides? Well, it depended on what I was doing. But um, I'd say at least a five or six all the time. So now what are you on this side? None. What's on this side? Maybe a two. See, it's coming. How's your uh, range of mobility? Is it increased? Much. Much. Much? Like how much percent? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60? Do about this much, and that's all. And now um, I'd have to find out. I have a chiropractor. I'm keep telling God I'm not going to go back anymore. But um, Are you from Boston? You have a chiropractor? In the car? Where you park your car? Where are you from? Car. I say car. car. This is a New Orleans accent. New Orleans. 
Everybody's like, yeah, come on, we're from the south. Don't mix us up with those people up east. Okay. Well, I, I'm a different south than these people, totally. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so now I want you to do this now. Go forward and backward. Did you used to be able to do? That hurts back here. That hurts? Okay, keep going, because the metal right now disappearing. I put my hand right there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, angel. Thank you for the angel and the Holy Spirit. Stuff is happening right now. We thank you, Lord. Okay, hold on. I had a word of knowledge that you had a brother, and you said yes. Okay, well, then, then were you traumatized by their deaths? It was young? Okay, so right now. And you're not angry? No. Are you sure? Are you sure? Okay, that's good. You're not angry at anything? The one that's still alive? No, that's the one. Okay. Father, we thank you. I break trauma of all those deaths. I break the spirit of death off you and your family right now. Say, I take that spirit of death before I come. Say, I speak that spirit. better okay but you're getting there keep going in tongues <laughs> 